Hello and welcome to Digital Combustion and today we're going to be looking at Fire Studio 6 and I'm going to be talking about what it is, what it does, and why you might want it for your department. And this is a great place to start if you're looking to purchase Fire Studio and you're not quite sure what it all does. And so this video will give you a, a good idea of what the software is capable of. And after that, if you have any other questions, you can certainly call us or email us and we'd be happy to talk to you further. So this will just give you a nice overview for those that are thinking about buying the software. So we are Digital Combustion. The product, as we said, is Fire Studio 6. We've been in business for over 20 years and we're providing fire simulation all over the world now. We're the world leader in fire simulation software and uh, we're pretty proud of that. Both uh, my partner Doug and I started this business, like I said, over 20 years ago. We're both firefighters, um, done over 30 years in the fire service uh, each and um, we basically made this to work for ourselves and turned into a business and now like I said it's used all over the world so let's go ahead and get into the uh, software so that you have a good idea what it's what it's for and Fire Studio is made for taking digital pictures uh, from your area adding them to the program and then you add smoke fire explosions hazmat elements victims and anything you want to create a very realistic view of a fire and uh, it's used for promotional assessment centers uh, just basic crew training pre-planning tactical training, classroom training, anything that you're going to need a nice visualization of a fire and um, that's what it is. So let me uh, just show you kind of what you're looking at here. So this is this is the interface that you'll be working in. Uh, we've got uh, different libraries where you've got your backgrounds and there's smoke and fire and different things that uh, you can use and all of these are layers that can be put on the screen and then once they're on the screen you can see everything's movable so this can all be moved around and placed into place and then um, we can layer the smoke and fire we can change the color the opacity the wind direction and all those different things and I'll show you examples of that in the simulation that I'm going to be showing because we've got a, examples of a little bit of everything so you can see what the software is capable of so if I go back into presentation mode uh, that gets rid of the interface and then I'm just going to go ahead and move forward with the keyboard and so you can see here uh, we've layered a bunch of smoke and fire over this picture and early on when we started digital combustion our main goal was was to create something as realistic as humanly possible on a computer because when you're doing a simulation you know there's enough pretending you have to do so we wanted to make the actual visualization of the fire as real as possible because as firefighters we make a lot of our decisions based solely on what we see so we pull up to a fire like this we, we take a quick look and we've got to make a series of decisions quickly and so our software allows you to train that way where you can train uh, both the decision making process and also the communication because if you go into your critiques after fires you'll find a lot of times it seems like the communications breaks down and and there's people stepping on each other and then also people aren't calling the same terminology out um, in, in their in their radio reports and so you know heavy smoke and fire to one guy might be moderate smoke and fire to another guy and fully involved to one guy is different so this lets you get everybody on the same page communication wise so that when they come up and they identify what they're looking at everybody even though they can't see it they're gonna have a much better idea of what they're looking at so this uh, this scene here like I said shows um, what you can do by layering all the smoke and fire layers that we give you to create an ultra realistic view we can also start um, adding changes to the fire whether it's we can make the fire get worse make it get better we can uh, do knockdowns we can change views and we can put keyboard shortcuts on there so that when I do a keyboard shortcut like I have one here my keyboard shortcut one I actually can start knocking down the fire but just by hitting a key and so now we've got a host stream shows up and you can see the smoke is changing color and this is just one example but so we can program in what we want to happen either over time or on a keyboard shortcut and so that's an example of that we can also have keyboard shortcuts that have other things happen like in this case we're looking at a uh, multi-story building and if you have if you have someone that you're running through the simulation and maybe they're just kind of going through the motions they're not really uh, that urgent about what's going on we can go ahead and do this and drop a victim out of a window and so that usually ups the ante or we can even have someone on fire coming out of there so then 
as they're doing the simulation, you can prod them into doing uh, something maybe a little faster or picking up the pace. So you can see, see that uh, adding a little bit of stress to that uh, simulation can change everything. We can show up to four views simultaneously. So here's four views. We've got an explosion that's happened. And you can see that all four views, we can have them update at the same time. Um, or we can go out of split screen and let's say we wanted to do like a walk around. We can go one, two, three, four, and I'm just using the one, two, three, four keys here. Or I can go back into split screen and, and show all four views at once. So that's just a, you can do this in any different combination. You could show one view, you could show two, three, or four. And then we can put together slides and we can have as many slides as, as we want. We can have one slide or we can have 300 slides. It's however many you want to build. This is just another example of layering the smoke and fire, and you can see the, the fire inside that room. Um, that's because we're able to mask things off and put smoke and fire behind different things, even though it's still a two-dimensional picture. Another thing that's unique to digital combustion is our video layers, our video clip art layers, and those are actually shot on green screen. So instead of a cardboard cutout of somebody that you can put in a window or something, we actually have people doing things. We have victims, we have firefighters uh, doing work. So you can see someone up there with a pike pole. That flag over there is a piece of video clip art, uh, someone falling on the ground. And so keep in mind, this is just a two dimensional picture that we've put in. And then we can add these elements to, to create more realism. And this is just an example of some of the other smoke and fire that we have that uh, you can make just about any kind of fire you want and again you can change the color the opacity the density the speed the direction the color everything can be changed so you literally have thousands of choices with your smoke and fire and hazmat elements and different things that you'll see as we, as we move forward you know again this is a a really nice nice shot could be anywhere mainstream usa and we've got a lot of smoke and fire layered on there and you can see it looks very realistic all the way up to high rise again these are different types of smoke so you can see this is, is much different than the smoke in the previous uh, slide so we just give you a whole lot of different things that you can do and there we've got that wind uh, being shown by the the flag there waving and we, like I said we can change those we can change which direction this this smoke is going we can do pretty much anything we want all the way down to just this just a bread and butter garage fire and a lot of people think of fire simulation as being more of a command level personnel, you know, captains, battalion chiefs, lieutenants, those kind of things where they're training, where some of my favorite training that we get is down at the crew level where you've got a lot of new tailboard firefighters that maybe haven't seen a lot of fire before. And so you can talk to them about something like this. We can bring this up just around the station, you know, either on their TV or on their computer and talk to the new guy and just say, hey, what, what are you thinking about before you approach this this uh, garage with a hose line. What what can hurt you in there? How can you get killed? You know what would happen if there's a you know a stack of fertilizer behind that or or fuel or different things. So there's a lot to talk about even on this, and it gets that really good conversations going at the crew level. You know all the way up to a you know here we've got a big tire warehouse, and um, we've got the different types of smoke and fire that allow you to do that. Just showing some different things. Now this is a time simulation. You can see we have our windsock up there. We've got a little bit of smoke coming out of a window off to the right. And so then we had that explosion happen. And so that was a timed event. So I just had that happen. I put it in there. I think it was 30 seconds. You can just tell it, okay, I, I want this layer to appear after a certain amount of time. And so then that way you can create a time simulation where things happen where you don't have to do any keyboard shortcuts or anything like that. You just let it run. And no matter what happens, the fire is going to keep getting worse and worse. And, and maybe you do that up to a point and then you can start controlling it with keyboard shortcuts after that or any combination. All the way up to something like this where I've got, I'm, I have keyboard shortcuts for all my explosions. So I'm going to hit those now. And then I can create those explosions whenever I want. So I have those all already implanted and then I have my keyboard shortcuts that uh, that allow me to, to basically detonate the explosions. And it doesn't have to be uh, building, planes, trucks, trains. You know, here's some aircraft. We've got some other aircraft stuff. These are just pictures. A lot of them you can get online. Uh, Google Image will be your great friend. You can also use Google Street View to uh, get actual street level pictures of 
basically any building in the United States pretty much. And so it's a really powerful tool to uh, be able to use and, and get all those images without having to go out and take a bunch of pictures. You know, here we've got, you know, a really well involved building that's starting to hit the exposures. You know, so this could be just something that maybe you're teaching a class and you want to you want to illustrate something. And so this is, you know, showing the importance of exposure protection, for instance, and and just different things like that. Now, this simulation is a time simulation. So we've got uh, just a small house and you can see that window in the front that the smoke starts blackening down on. And that's our damage layers that we have. And so that damage will allow you to put charring and blast stains and, and things like that on a house or a building so that once you start knocking that fire down, the building will still have damage to it. So you, know, you don't want to have a fire and then when you put it out, the building looks brand new. So this allows you to basically dirty up the building and make it look um, like it has been on fire. And so that, that makes it really... Uh, just again more realistic and now you can see we've got some ambient smoke coming out of that attic space and now we've got some really nasty pressurized smoke and steam with the pre-burning until finally the fire can can break through and so this again by layering our smoke and fire uh, we can make an extremely realistic view of a fire and then if we have the rear view I can flip to the rear view of that and show what's going on in the, in the back and so if you if you'll notice up here at this roof line where my mouse is going, we actually have uh, a mask here so you can mask off those things so that that way you can put the smoke and fire behind something so that when we when we go from the front to the rear view or if we wanted to show both those at once, you know, the front and the, and the back match each other. And so all those tools are in our instructor edition, which is what we're showing you here, so that you can create a, a really, really nice simulation. And here we've got all four sides of the building shown with just two views. So you can, we could do the A, B, C, and D side separately if you wanted, or if you wanted to, you know, show two sides and two sides like this. So it's just however you want to do it. And uh, the program is very flexible to let you do whatever you'd like to do. You know, here's an example of uh, something not a fire, but we've got a uh, a truck here that's, uh, we got this image just off of Google Images, added a little placard to kind of give a visual cue that we've got some something hazmat in here. We've got a liquid leak, a little bit of steam here, and then a victim on the ground. So, I mean, you could talk about this for an hour with, with some people. You know, you're talking about overhead maps, storm drains, vapor clouds, you know, are there evacuations needed, all these different things, all from this simulation that you know you can make this one in probably 10 minutes so very easy to use everything's mouse driven drag and drop and um, you can make make it happen so it doesn't have to be a fire here we, we have some uh, traffic collisions we've got uh, you know on the, on the left side we've got the bus um, or we've got victims we've got victims moving in the car we've added lights to the uh, the engine over here to liven the scene up and we've got some victims lying around um, and then we've also got the this one where we've got a traffic collision with bicycles and the victims and the bicycles are, are clip art video clip art and then this is just a, a photo that we that we grabbed online we're also starting to get a lot of requests for active shooters and things like that school shootings and so we've been working with some police departments but we do have the ability to to work with law enforcement and combine those into different simulations for you. You know, here's a hazardous materials type fire we've got, and we've actually got fire spread uh, from a leak going on the ground. So you can see that the fire is actually spreading across the pavement, you know, going downhill. So we've got all sorts of issues on this, this one that we can talk about. All the way to wildland fires. We can show fires in different areas. I mean, we can have this fire here, run the hill, where it's gonna go up and, and take over that house. And we've got, we're showing wind direction. So just a lot of different things you can do just based on what kind of terrain, what kind of houses, what kind of things that you have in your city. So anything you can take a picture of, you can bring it in here. Now here's something using like a satellite view or a Google image view or your a Google Earth. We can show engine placement. We can put text on the screen to show, you know, which engine's which. Um, so a lot of, lot of different options there. And then also we can use video as a backdrop. It doesn't have to be a still. Here we've got a... Uh, a looping video of a street scene and we've got the smoke and fire overlaid on that so it just just adds again another layer of realism to your simulation you know, it doesn't matter ships we've got uh, cargo anything you can you can bring in here you can uh, 
burn up even if you have a cruise ship. And this actually was a real fire that happened on a cruise ship. So that charring that you see in the back of that ship is actually real. We recreated it. And you can see we've added the uh, video clip art with actually water. We've got water coming out of here. And those are all elements that are found within Fire Studio. So we can, we can pretty much do anything we want. Now this is a uh, high-rise fire. We did a symposium in Canada, and they wanted us to do a high-rise fire for them, so we actually made this for the symposium. We've got some approach shots. Here's an, another example of using like a Google Earth and, and with, with some mapping over it. So we can show approach, where are we gonna do staging, you know, how are we gonna get in and out of this place. Um, it just gives you another, another view. Uh, again, I said you can put text on the screen, so here we've shown the main entry. We've shown the alarm panel and we can zoom in on that. We can show which floors are involved and we can put lights on those floors on different floors if you want. So you can you can set it up. We can show interior as well as exterior. So here's the actual fire. We can show a split view so we can show what's going on um, on both sides of that building. Um, back inside the stairwell and then here we can show interior as well as exterior once we have crews inside. So it's a uh, anything you want to do and any way you want to set it up you can do it and then this one starts getting worse and so you can see here with uh, a lot of layering we've got damage we've got smoke we've got fire we've got steam we've got a lot of things happening on this on this one slide but you know very realistic looking and you can start seeing it's jumping floors until it's finally you know really 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 going and um, you know this this is something that uh, you, you can't do with any other software. I mean, you, there's other simulators out there, but nothing, nothing looks as real as this. And so I'm going back to this building. Um, this is our, our back to our little small blue house, but I've, I've done like a faster time lapse on this and, and we're, we're starting to add more smoke and fire and different types of fire that you can download for free. And so these are some of the upcoming, these ones aren't even out yet, but you'll see some new smoke and fire elements on this once this building starts going, but we, we actually get this thing burning all the way down just about. So you can see those nice uh, wood beams. Uh, we've got new smoke that covers those, the beams around the windows. And so you can see it's really, really realistic looking and you can do a, just a fantastic realistic simulation on it. So I went through a lot of stuff, a lot of information. And if you have any questions at all, you can send a, quick email to support at digitalcombustion.com or sales at digitalcombustion.com and we'll get those uh, emails and you can also call our 800 number and we'll call you right back if we can and we can just uh, talk more about what it is that you need for your department and we can set up set you up for one screen, multiple screens, command training centers or anything you need. Uh, the, the program is really expandable so like I said you can start off with just the basic one one seat of the instructor edition then you can start adding players and the players will play back anything that's made on the instructor edition and so it's a much lower cost way of getting simulation out to like all your stations or if you like i said if you wanted to put together a training center where you had multiple multiple screens and cubicles or different rooms uh, you can also have players on ipads and so a lot of places are making basically a command training center in a box where they can have five or ten iPads and then just hand those out on a drill and then everybody will see their own specific view of that building and uh, can run the simulation. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video demonstration of the capabilities of Fire Studio 6 and we hope to hear from you soon. If you can make sure you, you stay uh, current on our website at digitalcombustion.com. We've got a lot of info there, a lot of other videos there with tutorials and training and help and demonstrations so there's plenty of info out there and then like i said once you contact us we'll work out whatever the best thing that will fit your budget and your needs for your department so we look forward to hearing from you and my name is rich Merritt uh, with digital combustion and we'll talk to you soon thank you